Hello and welcome to Drugs Plus. Whether you're here for exam revision or just general interest, I hope you find this video useful. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to support this channel so that I'm able to continue creating this content. In this video, I'm going to give a brief overview of the mechanisms of action of various bronchodilators used to treat both asthma and COPD. The three main bronchodilators are antimuscarinics, xanthines, and beta-2 agonists. All three of these classes of drug dilate the airways by increasing protein kinase A activity. First, I'm going to talk about antimuscarinics. Short-acting antimuscarinics, such as acrotropium, need to be administered three to four times daily, while long-acting antimuscarinics, such as teotropium, need to be administered only once or twice daily. So how do antimuscarinics work? Muscarinic receptors are GI-coupled and therefore decrease the activity of protein kinase A. For more information on the different types of G-protein coupled receptors, you can see my video on these, the link for which I will provide below. However, antimuscarinics block these receptors, meaning pKa is disinhibited and its levels increase. More on the effects of pKa soon. Next, I'm going to talk about xanthines, which include theophylline and doxophylline. Phosphodiesterase, or PDE, breaks down cyclic AMP. Xanthines, however, are PDE inhibitors and therefore prevent PDE from doing this. This allows cyclic AMP to go on to activate protein kinase A. And finally, I'm going to talk about beta-2 agonists. Short-acting beta-2 agonists, such as salbutamol, need to be administered three to four times daily, while long-acting beta-2 agonists, such as salmeterol, need to be administered only once or twice daily. Beta-2 receptors are GS-coupled, meaning their activation by beta-2 agonists activate adenyl cyclase, which increases the concentration of cyclic AMP, which goes on to increase the activity of protein kinase A. So, the pKa activated by antimuscarinics, xanthines and beta-2 agonists go on to inhibit myosin light chain kinase and to activate myosin light chain phosphatase, which produces smooth muscle relaxation. Smooth muscle relaxation in the airways results in bronchodilation, treating the immediate effects of asthma and COPD. However, Lumen diameter is only part of the problem, which is why further medications are usually taken, many of which I will detail in future videos. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to support this channel so I'm able to continue creating this content. I'll be back with more pharmacology videos soon.